All right. So if you are to consider our previous class, we managed to talk about a series wound uh, generator, considering calculations that are needed as long you are to deal with a series wound. You saw the calculations that they ask you. In this case, we need to have a continuation looking into the shunt wound. So remember, this was combination that we had of the series wound generators, the formulas that you have. And as we saw, the series field, the field is connected in series with what? With the armature. But in this case, in the shunt, this is a combination, this is a parallel combination. This one. We are talking about the two being connected in parallel, meaning to say we are going to have uh, this field winding in a parallel with the armature. So they will be in a parallel to each other, and that's called the shunt resistor. So in this case, this is the shunt field. So this is going to be called RSH4, the shunt resistance, since we are talking about what? The shunt field there. This is our shunt field. And the armature, part of the armature, remember, we're talking of a generator. And as I said, a generator, it supplies the current. So meaning to say the armature that is here is supplying the current. This is the one that we are seeing here as our armature current, which is going to flow according to Kirchhoff's law. Another current branches here. Another current is going to branch going into the, the, the field, which is our shunt field. So that current can be referred as the shunt current. And this one going to the load is our load current. So a load can be connected at the output terminals, a load can be connected there. So there we're gonna consider the terminal voltage and the power, which is at the output referred to as the electrical power. And the one that is at the input, remember we're talking of a generator, so the one that is there at the input is referred what? as our mechanical power. So I talked about this, that this is your mechanical power and the one that is at the output is the electrical power. Remember the property, remember uh, the generator part. Conversion of mechanical energy to electrical. So this is the shunt field. So which are the calculations that we are supposed to expect to have as we are to deal with our shunt field? In terms of the calculations, you are going to notice that. This time, the armature current is the one that is supplying. So it, according to Kirchhoff's law, these two currents, they are flowing away from the junction, whereas the armature current is flowing towards the junction. So it follows that the armature current becomes the sum of these two, the load current and the shunt field current from your Kirchhoff's law. As the voltage that is across here is the same voltage affecting directly here, the across the, the shunt field here, the voltage that we are noticing at the terminals there is the same voltage that is across the shunt field. So that can act as an advantage for us to obtain the shunt current because the voltage is av readily available, which is your terminal voltage, versus the resistance. But which resistance are you talking about? The resistance of the shunt. It can give us the shunt current. So considering the power, which is at the output, because that is the electrical power. So as we know, electrical power from voltage times current, it is the voltage at the terminal times the current at the load, which is our load current. We can also calculate that. All right, so that's two. And this one, three, let's consider. Uh, the EMF generated. Remember, we have, according to this here, is the EMF that is generated. Remember that? So the EMF generated, as I said, from the EMF equation, considering that this is a generator, the EMF equation states that it's V plus the armature current times the resistance of the armature circuit. So according to us here, according to this diagram, the armature circuit is only its resistance there. We do not have anything connected in series or what. So this formula is just going to tend to be what? V 
plus the armature current times the armature resistance as it is because we do not have anything that is connected in series. Remember, we are talking about armature resistance where the armature current is flowing as it is there. The armature current is flowing in this branch as it is. Here it's now branch. It's no longer armature. It's now load. Here it's now shunt current. Here where you see your armature current, which resistances are there. It's only the resistance of the armature there. So that is the one that you have just have to consider uh, from there. Uh, sometimes they can even ask you to calculate the armature current being given. This uh, you can also manipulate and make uh, armature current the subject from this formula. We can make armature current. Uh, take this one to the other side. It's going to be E minus V. You divide by the armature resistance. So therefore, from this formula, we can say the armature current is equal to E minus V over RA. It can be like that. They can give you, provided you are given the generated EMF, you are given the terminal voltage, and you have the armature resistance. You can calculate the armature current. You can calculate it from there. If the load current is there, the shunt current is there, then you can calculate it from there. But like I said, also the shunt current can also be obtained from the terminal voltage over the shunt field. So with these formulas, uh, we are going to consider how questions might be given. On this example that we are having, we are given that a shunt wound, they are telling us that it's a shunt wound generator with an armature field resistance of. So this is a shunt wound. All right, so let's consider, according to our information, they are saying it's a shunt wound. So as we saw, we are going to have our shunt field all right, then we are going to have our armature. So this is the part of the armature circuit that we have. So the resistance we are given that with a shunt field resistance of, we are given uh, the shunt field resistance, which is 200 ohms. Resistance that is affecting the shunt here is given as 200 ohms. The armature and an armature resistance of, the resistance of the armature is also given uh, 0 0.1. 5 ohms, thus we've got armature resistance there. Uh, supply is 45 amps at the terminal, meaning to say the load current at the terminals, the load current is given as 45 amperes. It supplies this current of 45 amperes at the load at a terminal voltage of what? 250 volts, meaning to say we are given what is happening at the terminal. The voltage there is given as 250 volts at the, at the terminal. To a certain load, calculate A, the armature current. So the first question was to calculate armature current. How are you going to obtain the armature current? Is it that we have the E and so forth? Because we saw that there are two formulas that armature current can be used, this one or this one. But we do not have the generated EMF, so this one cannot work. So let's think about the first formula. In the calculation of the armature current, we saw that the armature current can be ob obtained from our Kirchhoff slope because this is the one that is flowing. As you do understand, you have got your generated EMF, the armature current, and here we are going to have our shunt field. The armature current is the one that is supplying. So it is the sum of the two, the load current and the shunt field. Where we are given, in this case, the load current according to our information, but the shunt field current is not there. Because the voltage is the same as the one that is across the shunt field, we can use that because the same voltage is there. So remember what I said. So the shunt current was going to be obtained from there, which is from the terminal voltage over the resistance of the shunt field. So there we have everything. The voltage is there. The resistance of the shunt is there. So it's just substituting. What is our voltage? 250 over the resistance of the shunt which was 200 ohms. So with this, substituting our values, we're going to obtain the current that is affected by the shunt. And that was going to give us 1,25 amps. Combined together with that load current, amateur current can now be obtained. Remember your load current, you are given, that is 45 amps plus the amateur current, I mean this uh, shunt field that we just uh, calculated. So with these, we're going to obtain your amateur 
current and that was going to be 46,25 amps. Remember, you're calculating current in amperes. All right, just like that. Then B, the magnitude of the generated EMF. E, the generated EMF. How can we have it? All right, let us just try have it on top here. Remember, this is a shunt. And as from our formulas, I just need to take the last formula because we have this. It's equal to this from we saw from the presentation of our formula, how it's going to be like at the end. So we ended up with E is equal to V plus amateur current times amateur because we only have that resistance only where the amateur is flowing here. There's only amateur resistance. So you just use that. So everything is there. V, amateur current, we calculated this. This one is there. So what is your terminal voltage? 250 plus your amateur current, the one that you calculated here. So remember we obtained uh, 46,25 times the amateur resistance, which is 0 0,15 as we are given it there. So multiplying this, adding to 250, it was going to give us 200, uh, that is 256,9375, something like that, which is going to give us uh, 938 to three days more places. You talk of what? Volts there. Generated EMF measured in what? In volts. Then C, they want you to calculate the power delivered to the load. At the load, remember there we've got other load, whatever that you have. And what is that power? Output power, which is the electrical power from the terminal voltage and the load current. It can be calculated. And they want this one in kilowatts. So output power, which is the power delivered. That's voltage times what? Times the load current. So we have the voltage at the terminals, 250 is there. And the load current flowing there here at the terminal is what? 45. So that was going to give us the power, which is 11,250 watts. But as we are given in kilowatts, so you can simply divide this by 1,000 to convert to kilowatts. So it was going to be 11.250, uh, which you can just write as 11.25 in what? In kilowatts. Or you can multiply here by 10 to the exponent of minus 3. The conversion there to kilowatts, guys, is on how you understand it. So questions can be like that, where they need you to calculate in this manner. So just make sure that you do revise as much questions as you can. Considering the other question, which is another example that we are given, uh, example 3.2, a shunt wound generator. Again, we are still back on that shunt wound, where we are having uh, the field connected in parallel to the what? Connected in parallel to the armature. Okay, so this is uh, just like what we had, guys. Uh, this is just a repetition now. Just hope you use those previous diagrams as I uh, stated before this and that. So given that, it delivers. Once you're given these questions, it delivers power. Amp, that is the power output at the terminals. Remember, at the terminals, that's where you have your power output here. You'll be having your input power, which is your mechanical power. But at the output there, that is the one that you're given, it delivers 2,5 kilowatts at a terminal voltage and the voltage there is given which is 200 watt which is 200 volts so they gave us that power that is at the output according to this information is 2,5 uh, kilowatts uh, that's 2,5 kilowatts and the voltage at the terminal is 200 volts if the shunt field resistance is the shunt field here remember the part of the shunt so you're given that the shunt field is equal to 120 ohms. Calculate the following. A, amateur current. So we saw previously in our question, we also needed to calculate this amateur current. And we ended up with a formula where the amateur current is equal to what? Because it's the one that is flowing here, supplying the shunt and also the load. So it's so the sum of the two, the load current and the shunt. So in this case, we do not have any. The load is not there. Also, the shunt is not there. Where can we obtain the load current? Take a closer look at the output. We have the output power and voltage there. 
So the load current can be calculated from the power output because output power is voltage times the load current. Remember that. So you can calculate that. Divide by the voltage by the voltage. So it means the load current was going to be P out over V, which is your terminal voltage. With the output that we are given of 2,5 kilowatts times 10 to the exponent of 3, a kilo over what? the voltage. What is our voltage? 200. The load current was going to be calculated from there. So that is it. So in this case, calculating our load current, we are going to obtain 12,5 uh, amps. And we also need the shunt. You do not have that. What about the shunt? We saw that the shunt from the shunt field, because the voltage at the terminals is the same voltage across the shunt. So it means you can calculate that, vo uh, that current, which is across the shunt. So the shunt current from the voltage over the resistance of the shunt field. So what is the voltage, terminal voltage? 200. The resistance of the shunt, 120 ohms we are given. So with this, the shunt current can be calculated. So it's all about the formulas, guys. Write down your formulas. Practice as much as you can those formulas. So it was going to be 1,666 and so on and so on. So to three decimal places, it's going to be 1,667. As we have the shunt current and the load current, how much a current now can be calculated because it is the sum of these two from our Kirchhoff's laws. So we have got 12,5 there plus what? The shunt, which is 1.667. So the amateur current thereafter was going to give us a 14,167 amperes. Just like that. So you must be careful with the questions. You see, sometimes they just want you to calculate this. You calculate that one. After this, you calculate this. It's like it's exam, tests, whatever that you have. Try to figure out how the question is given. B, the amateur resistance, if they generated EMF is they gave us, they gave us the generated EMF. If the generated EMF is 210 volts, calculate the amateur resistance. Remember from that generated EMF that you used to have, how were you calculating it before? Considering a generator V plus amateur current, we said this is a shunt. So from our formulas, guys, we saw this is the RA because we only have that amateur resistance here is part of the amateur circuit. There's nothing that is there. We do not have anything in series. It's just amateur resistance. So they want you to calculate that amateur resistance. Let's just make it the subject. Take V to the other side. That will be E minus V is equal to amateur current times amateur resistance. So dividing by the amateur current both sides, it means you are going to be left with amateur resistance. So with this formula, amateur resistance was going to be calculated E minus V over what? Over the amateur current. What is our E? We calculated this, remember? You generated EMF. You calculated that. I mean, you are given, sorry, this one you are given. They said, take that to be 210. So that is 210 minus V, which is our terminal voltage, as we are given that, 200. Remember, you're given this as 200. You divide this to, to the amateur current, which is the one that we calculated. Remember, amateur current we calculated there, it was 14,167. So you divide to 14,167. The amateur resistance was going to be obtained from there. You can obtain the amateur resistance. So simplifying this, you're going to obtain 0, 0,7, uh, 0, 0,06 ohms as the resistance that is affecting our amateur. So questions can be like that, as I, as I said. So make sure that you work with more questions, understand, especially working with the shunt wound generators and also the series wound like we had in our previous class, like I was stating that we worked with that one. So make sure that you manage, you go through your calculations as you consider uh, the part of the shunt wound generators, know your formulas, 
as you are to consider your series wound general, know your formula. So these are the major two types they are going to ask in terms of your calculations. Then as you consider the compound wound, because you are going to be having that part also of the compound wound generators, that part, it is for your N4 electrotechnics when you are dealing now with uh, electrotechnics. That is where you will be dealing with uh, uh, those compound wound generators. But in your syllabus, they just want you to have you know their, those diagrams. So just revise with your textbooks and also question papers and understand how do they ask these typical questions.